If knowledge is the map on how to reach a destination, and practice is walking that path with the map, then skill is walking that path without the map and doing so easily. I think everybody understands that there's a difference between knowledge and skill, but I don't think everyone fully understands how big that gap is and ways that you can close the gap. So today I wanna to talk not just about why you might be stuck in your rank in Overwatch and Overwatch 2. However, I want to talk about why this difference is actually really important and even how you're learning. You see, knowledge is good. Knowing things is good. Learning is good. There is something very satisfying and very enjoyable about learning something all the time. I think it's good and admirable to aspire to be a beginner in something at all the time. If you're good at everything that you do and you've never put yourself in a new environment, learning something new, uh, I think you're missing out. I think the brain and the body desires and benefits greatly from always being put in a learning environment. However, with things that matter the most to us, when we're trying to transition from that beginner, from that knowledge-based motion into skill, and that's when things get a little bit more tricky. Now, everybody knows practice means perfect, but everybody also should know at this point in time that perfect practice makes perfect. But what is perfect practice? How do you transfer all the knowledge that you may have into skill? Well, if you've been in my position, maybe in another community, maybe a different video game or a different sport or just a different hobby or even work, You'll notice that there's a lot of people that are involved in the community and know every little detail about the community, but aren't very good at the skill. Uh, I know people like that in football. I know people like that in jujitsu. Uh, I've known people like that in many other walks of life. And there are people in the Overwatch community who have watched every video, know every tip, every trick, could probably coach the game better than I can, and are terrible at the game. And that's a knowledge skill gap. The question is, why does that happen? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Some people just enjoy learning the game and don't have the time or interest to grind it. But there's another subcategory of people, and I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a very black and white thing. I think the lines in between are very blurry. But there are a lot of people that struggle with the application of that knowledge. And I think when we identify what the problem is, one of the most common problems in that is the ability to apply what you know transferring that knowledge to skill with perfect practice. You know, you've, I've done a few videos about how <laughs> people make fun of me for having a very simple coaching process. I think the, my understanding of the game, I'd like to say, I'd like to believe, is, is fairly advanced. But when it comes to teaching it, even to high-level players, it's pretty simple. It's angles and map control and timing and range and very just basic fundamentals of that. And even as I've developed my coaching further, I feel like I've even boiled it down even simpler. Maybe introducing some concepts like understanding how to control space or, or, or layering or dynamic positioning, something that might sound advanced at the initial hearing, but upon applying it, you're like, well, this isn't actually that complicated. And to me, that's the most important thing that you can do, not only as a coach, but as you're coaching yourself. The thing is, is when you're reading a map, there's a lot of details that could be put on the map. Anyone's read uh, The Lord of the Rings, remembers Tolkien's beautiful, beautiful drawings. However, when you want a really beautiful, beautiful map, and you want a really, really effective map, those two things are generally quite different. For example, a lot of the details you might find on a map about a road stop or a gas station or a, you know, a cracker barrel five miles down the road, those can honestly even be more distractions than they are actual benefit to your end goal. A good map isn't necessarily the most detailed. A good map is the simplest to read, the easiest to remember, the easiest to apply, and will get you there the most efficient path. That's what good coaching does. And the reason why that's important is not just to, you know, oh, this is what I try to do. This is what you need to be trying to do. You see, there are a lot of people who, when they get in game, they don't have a clear mental path, a very clear mental map, a very clear, perfect practice mindset about what they need to be doing that game. And it's not just as simple as, oh, focus on one thing at a time until you get it. Well, what is that one thing? And as I've gotten more and more uh, practiced at coaching this game, I've actually learned that that one thing is usually a mental habit or a thought process more than it is remember this tip or trick. For example, one of the biggest things that I coach nowadays, and as corny as it sounds, is I will generally coach, hey, before the fight starts, think about your positioning. I'm not telling them even how to position. I think at this point in time, a lot of people, especially in the mid ranks plus, already know or have a general idea of what good positioning looks like most of the time, 75, 80% of the time. 
So to close that gap of knowledge and skill, I don't need to teach them more advanced angles and, and you remind them about, oh, this is a cool position you can hold on Coliseo. No, no, no. They just need to apply what they already know. They need to practice doing that until they can do it without thinking. And that's the funny thing. You need to, to, to think about what they know so they don't have to think about what they know. That's the irony. And that's what we're talking about when it comes to walking the map without having to look at the map. It's about making it almost, uh, you ever, ever notice when your, your parents sort of remind you your address or your phone number, or maybe it was a times table, or maybe it was, uh, you know, some historical date and you'd sing song it. you'd find some way to sing it, A, B, C, D, E, because it helped you to remember, right? And in a way, the way that I coach, the way that I teach, and the way you should be coaching and teaching is trying to find ways to make those fundamentals that you need. Those deep, well, well, obfuscating and removing the details Find a way to make those details, not the details, the, the fundamentals memorable. That's what you need. That's what you need until you no longer even have to think about it. And I think that's what's the difference between people who have knowledge and people who have skill is the people who have skill have developed very simple mental processes along the way, whether it was months, weeks, or years ago, that helped them to actually apply the knowledge that they already had. And not just the knowledge they already had, but the important knowledge that they had. And so the more that I coach, the more that I teach, the more I simply rely on teaching players to develop basic mental habits, like think about your positioning. What should you do with your ultimate? Where should you be? Who should you shoot? Nade, 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 sleep, 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 you know, angle, angle, angle. Some, depending on the hero, obviously those mental habits might look slightly different, but ultimately it's about building a more cognitive player when they're learning, thinking very in detail and and, and, and depth during those processes so that when those moments happen later, it almost becomes automatic. And that's where the gap between knowledge and skill closes is when so much of the game is automatic. And, and it's funny because when I play the game myself, I actually find that because I've coached some of these things so many times that even though I've been coaching and not playing, my playing in a way becomes automatic where I can, uh, there's not mechanics, of course, and, and certainly not cooldown usage, but certain positioning aspects I can almost autopilot on because I've coached them so many times, it comes naturally to me even playing them. And that's the weird thing about video games. It's almost like watching a sprinter sprint so many times that you can adopt their form without even sprinting yourself. So what do you do with this knowledge? I guess for you, don't think about more of what you don't know. Think about what you already know that you aren't applying and then take it one step further because usually most people stop there and that's not good enough. You need to think about what you know that you're not applying and think about what's the best, most efficient, most effective way for me to be able to apply this. Not just apply the knowledge, but to phrase it and remember it and state it in a very simple way that makes it stick in my mind and makes it easy to apply and something that I can think about in game without distracting myself from the complicated game of Overwatch. Now that's something that I've spent years applying myself to, and that's why I'm pretty darn good at it. But there's not saying that you can't do it too, and you should be aiming to if this game is important to you. And remember, as it is with all these videos, it's never about Overwatch. It's never just about Overwatch. Any skill that you apply, simplify, create a simple mental process, walk the map, and then discard the map and walk the walk without the directions. Hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll catch you in the next video.